So this provides the context, and I think that's kind of important for both the general public and for people to be conscious of when we're talking about climate change. Now, what we're really going to concentrate on is this little box here, the last 10,000 years. So as the glaciers melted and as the sea level rose, how did the landscape adjust? So if we just blow that up, some recent work by Brian Jones and colleagues, uh, Brian's a colleague of mine from uh, University of Wollongong, and what they've managed to very effectively do is very neatly time here's an when the sea level reached where we are. So here's we are sitting in this lovely homestead just here. This is a transect that we've done across the valley floor, and we've spent the last 10 days peppering the landscape with holes. Um, uh, I was pleased to hear that Deb said that um, Arthur would appreciate this sort of collaboration because it's always good to find willing so landholders. What and we did is we pulled together this little cartoon for you just to sort of show you what our findings are. Now look, we only finished work two days ago so we can't sort of say it's this old, it's this old, it's that old. But in a nutshell, what we've found is that these alluvial flats are very deep. Now I was actually interested in to see if we could find any estuarine mud under these. Um, well, it tells you that um, the last time sea level rose to higher than present, mm -hmm. it didn't form an estuary here. So the, 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 um, the feeling probably is that when sea levels rise again, we won't have an estuary here. What we'll have is a, is a tidal prism that goes further upstream. So what will, some landholders might, might lose their freshwater parking location. Because the scientists seem mainly concerned with like the earth and the, and, like, the um, geological history of the site. But you know, I know that you collaborated with some Aboriginal artists and, um, and you know, then there's the Boyd history as well. Like, to what extent did that sort of inform your artistic process or how much did you include that and at what point did that come in? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me when we started, when we started thinking about this project, it was straight away important to me to, and having just worked with Cecil and the Dunich guy and Richard and and all the Dunich guys recently, like a year ago, you know, it was really, seemed like a really important thing and just a logical thing to do straight away because we're talking about cultural history here and there's no point doing it without, you know, people who've been here for a really long time getting involved. And then when you think, I guess when you go back to the early 1900s, anyway, sort of turn of the century, the Mackenzie family had been here for four generations. The, um, one of the daughters was just, I was getting ready to take her horse down to the, the narrow show and was watching the horse in the river and the river was a bit high at that time and she ended up drowning and her father jumped in to try to save her and he ended up drowning also. And then within a year, the Mackenzies who'd lived here for four generations had left the site. So, you know, there's a very tangible history in this site and, you know, if that property hadn't been sold and bought by somebody else and bought by somebody else, Arthur probably would never have bought it. We wouldn't be sitting here having, you know, having this chat. So that, and the water level rise. So for me, that side of cultural history of the site is really important. It, How would that uh, I've got connection, a, do you think, have played out? Uh, I'm sort of interested because uh, the earth sciences have had a long association with art. You know, uh, some of us might look at the Mona Lisa and see it as a landscape painting uh, because the background, of course, was uh, a landscape. And it, it carries a lot of significance. The landscapes that were painted at the time by the artists uh, had real meaning. Uh, to, to them, and they put them in with a, with a definite purpose, you know, they weren't just the background. Um, and it's just interesting that uh, I think in the, in the earth sciences we have a much longer and more definite connection with art and the arts generally than perhaps some of the other sciences. So I just wonder, perhaps just fortunate that Tim's uh, an earth scientist rather than say a microbiologist. And or a... Ideas can come out of that. Mm. From the science point of view, what's the purpose, what's, what's the benefit? I'll answer that if I can. Yeah. One of the things you see in the media actually, and with particular reference to climate change and sea level, is the complete dumbing down of science. So that there's a general gross miseducation of people about climate change. So I was really excited by the opportunity of doing a collaborative project where you could represent the science to a new audience, to the general public. and create an increased awareness and I think as scientists we actually have a role um, to provide that education and I think to date it's been very monosyllabic the way science is presented to the general public and I think choosing another medium like art is just another way in which that information can be 
accessible or digested by another group of people that might not normally already approach it. Oh. Um.